Yeah, I think we have done the non-catalytic reactions and we started with that uh, performance equation diagram. Now, again I am going to draw the same diagram. This is uh, a reactor. I think this diagram will come even in your dreams, I think. Output. kinetics contacting then we have here chemical <coughs> physical batch continuous and here you have in continuous P f M f and the performance equation is given as output, output as a function of input kinetics contacting. So, this is the equation and when you are uh, discussing about non catalytic reactions, this equation has been beautifully used. I do not know whether you appreciate it or not, I appreciate myself, because there is information that is required from kinetics that one we have seen for single particles and contacting, contacting mainly comes through RTD in fact, okay. yeah, ET either ideal or non ideal. So, that means, we have a broad framework for all reactor design. Right? Now, let us see in catalytic reactions, what is that that is required? Input again is definitely required, because that de determines the plant capacity and kinetics, we need now a rate expression and we also had a rate expression for non catalytic reactions okay that is mainly in terms of xb and time here we will have in catalytic reactions the rate equation will be in terms of minus ra and uh, as a function of uh, you know the partial pressures or concentrations again you need a rate expression but what form it will be we will now see okay then contacting anyway it will come if it is a packed bed if you have a rate expression packed bed catalytic reactor, where the, uh, the solid particles are catalysts now. And the difference between non catalytic and catalytic is in non catalytic reactions, the solid will finally, be converted into a product. right? So, and it may even disappear like in coal combustion or coal gasification, whereas in uh, catalytic reactions, the solid will not change. The size is same. And if you assume that activation deactivation is not there, so then lifelong you can use this catalyst as a catalyst particle. Okay. So, under those conditions, somewhat it is easier than non catalytic reactions because the solid here is a inert as far as reaction is concerned, but only it is increasing the rate of reaction inside the particle when the molecules go, but it is not participating directly in the reaction. Okay. So, it is easy for us that means, when I put a packed bed let us say 1 centimeter particles I pack and then if there is no deactivation till I die I can use. Of course, now I have only short span, but even if you also start till your end you can always use packed bed. Okay. So, like that even a fluidized bed, moving bed again all the reactors that is why I have been appreciating chemical engineering so much because you have the contacting patterns any reactor you bring you can bring you can break into only two ideal reactors. So, that is why in one sense you do not have to learn much as far as the contacting pattern is concerned. Only you have to learn is mathematics analysis depending on the complications. right? So, I mean even non catalytic reactions also I have done only simple things and the one of the simplest thing what we have done is only single particle and change is only in the particle there is no gas change. That means, there is no concentration change in the gas phase. 
Okay. Normally, we can maintain that in industry by sending large amounts of gas, particularly when the gas is not very costly like air, you just compress and then blow over the coal particles and you do not have to recover anything with that. But whereas, hydrogen and all that when you use, definitely you have to take that also into account. But concepts are same, only mathematical analysis will be a little bit difficult, that is all. And that is the reason why you know we are giving you 6 or 7 courses mathematics you know in uh, B tech 4 5. I think some of people would have done 6 and in MTech also you have mathematical methods in chemical engineering and uh, I think uh, and every uh, transport phenomena is nothing but it uh, again mathematical course if you do not appreciate the physical phenomena of the uh, processes. So, everywhere you see mathematics in chemical engineering because the processes are complicated right. So, now let us see how we develop this kinetic expression as I have been telling you this we know only 2 reactors and batch that is all, 2 continuous and 1 batch. And this also I know, this job we will give to MBA people, they will go to market and then say that so much you have to produce. Okay. So, then we will know our uh, production, then th this is where we have to concentrate most of the time depending on what kind of heterogeneous system you have. We had uh, gas solid non catalytic reactions, liquid solid also same, except that when you have that pseudo steady state assumption that is no more valid. So, again mathematically complicated. That is all, other than that you do not have to learn anything new there. For example, gas liquid systems, same procedures all the time, develop a rate expression, go to contacting pattern and you know the input and substitute this uh, kinetics in terms of rate in the contacting pattern equation and then you have to integrate. Good. Okay. So, in the kinetics of uh, catalytic reactions, most of the time we know that we have only solid catalysts. We also have liquid catalysts, but I think you know that is that is called homogeneous catalysis. Okay. For example, biodiesel is one of the examples, they use liquid uh, biodiesel from uh, uh, seeds and all that they are doing now, jetropa and all that. So, there the catalyst also is in the form of uh, liquid, but the, the liquid catalyst should be dissolved in one of the liquid phases. You cannot really identify whether there is a catalyst or not, only through actions only you can see, because it is completely dissolving which you cannot see that. Okay. So, but we are talking about gas solid uh, catalytic reactions, because that kind of reactions are many, many in industry. Can you give me examples? No, ah, gas solid. Huh? FCC. Ah, FCC. FCC. What is the catalyst? Geolite. Geolite. Okay. One more example. Hydrogenation reaction in other years, nickel, platinum. Hydrogenation reaction is slurry. I am asking gas solid. Ammonia. I think it is a very ammonia. simple ammonia. example, my favorite ammonia. example ammonia. all the time. Ammonia. Ah, ammonia. What is the catalyst? iron catalyst. I think you know the simplest one what I have been telling all the time is sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. Okay. In one step you have to use catalytic reaction, what is that? SO2 to SO3. SO2 to SO3 and what is the catalyst? So, like that of course, many, many, many catalysts are used in industry, because just to increase the rate of reaction and uh, it is heterogeneous system. So, what we imagine again here is one single particle. right? So, I may have a particle Okay, something like this, again beautiful spherical particle we are trying to draw and then we have here the film and because most of the time we use uh, porous particles, we have to also show that pores. So, this may be something like this or okay. it may be whatever way you want to draw, you can draw it. Okay. So, here also I may have So, this may be solid, this may be solid. So, something like this you will have the solid particle and now 
uh, if we imagine, yeah, the gas will be flowing like this. This is gas, reactant gas. Now, as usual, we can imagine what are the number of steps that are required for the reaction to take place. Step one will be, okay. So, step one is, yeah, mass transfer of. Okay, let me also say that we have a reaction, something like, uh, for simplicity again, A going to R. This is catalyst. A going to R, that is catalyst. So now this is actually gas gas A. Then step one is mass transfer of reactant to the surface. Correct? Yeah. Step two. Yeah, where? Yeah. So unless it go, it does that, it, it cannot. So this is adsorption or diffusion. We will say not adsorption, sorry. Diffusion of A through the pores Yeah. And step three adsorption now. Adsorption of A on the surface. Step four, yeah, reaction on the surface. That is step four, and step five. Yeah. Yeah. Disruption of product from the surface. Yeah. Step uh, six. Diffusion of product gas. Through the pores, and step seven is again mass transfer of products. Mass transfer of products through the film. Through the film to bulk gas. Seven steps, seven commandments. Yeah. So all of them are they are uh, you know series steps or uh, parallel steps or series parallel? All of them are series. Okay. So if I take one molecule. The molecule has to first go through the film, then diffuse through the pores, then get adsorbed. And uh, our imagination is after getting adsorbed and an active sites, active site, then that will dissociate into some kind of intermediate, and then the reaction takes place. Okay, and uh, after the reaction, the product is formed at the same site, but now product has to leave the site. Why? It can happily sit there. Catalyst? Not used for the. Yeah, but why you should leave? Concentration. Concentration. Gradient. Yeah, concentration gradient. gradient. Because outside you have less concentration of product, and inside you have more concentration of product because of the generation there, because this is converted reactant converted to product. So that's why it has to leave. So because of the concentration gradient, it comes out, and then again the diffusion through the pores and the diffusion through the film, and then comes out. Okay, good. Out of this, how many are mass transfer steps and how many are reaction steps? Which is the one? 
step 4 step 4 step 4 yeah but what about desorption and adsorption what do you tell them is it mass transfer step or uh, yeah. reaction step yeah. yeah so we call them 4 5 and 6 uh, sorry okay 3 4 5 are the generally reaction steps which contains uh, you know uh, adsorption desorption and surface reaction okay and adsorption surface reaction and desorption all three so that is why all three first we take because that is where the reaction taking place the remaining four are mass transfer steps right and through the film we already have the equation same froslink equation again same uh, ranjan marshall correlation here also why i have the film surrounding that i have the i mean i have the particle surrounding that i have the film then reactant has to go through that and at steady state when the continuous process is going on we also have the products coming out so now you have again assuming that equivalent counter diffusion right so products are uh, coming out reactants are going in so a, a kind of dynamic equilibrium is established there steady state again okay steady state so that mass transfer coefficient i can find out through correlations and uh, always mass transfer depends on hydrodynamics i don't know whether any time you realize it that first of all you should know what is hydrodynamics okay hydrodynamics means it is the fluid mechanics around the particle or inside the reactor okay so mass transfer coefficients and heat transfer coefficients always depend on hydrodynamics or in general fluid mechanics that's why first fluid mechanics we teach before going to heat transfer and then mass transfer okay why why it should depend because if the particle is stationary and the gas is moving around that or fluid is moving around that we will have a kind of a, a relationship between the particle and then the fluid this is in the packing if i use the same particle in fluidized bed again the relationship between the gas how it moves and then uh, you know the solid how it moves is totally different so here in a fluidized bed the particle vibrates particle hits other particles and uh, all kinds of things will happen okay it may temporarily jump and then again fall down all kinds of things so the mass transfer process or heat transfer process surrounding this will be different when compared to a packed bed where the particle once you put there it is there all the time it's not changing but the same thing again if i put in a moving bed moving bed that means now packed bed is no more packing then the entire bed is slides, uh, slowly sliding down then again how the hydrodynamics what we call or fluid mechanics around the particle again different right same thing and then now you can put the same particle in uh, rotary kill again mass transfer will be heat, trans heat and mass transfer will be different so that is why heat and mass transfer coefficients or the process depends on what kind of hydrodynamic conditions what you have that is what actually my research area for long uh, you know so many years uh, i am always uh, trying to find out in a reactor before the reaction starts what kind of hydrodynamics are established and not only this particularly heterogeneous systems packet bed for example we say wide edge of or wide fraction of solids and wide fraction of next phase liquid or fluid in general okay it can be liquid or it can be gas then how do i know that because it is packing here and this is not moving i know because i can find out exactly what is the wide edge but the moment i go to fluid edge bed where particles are moving how do i know that what is the wide edge the fractions again wide edge means the fractions okay fraction of solids and fraction of gas how do i know and depending on my velocity in the fluid edged bed the bed may expand because normally in a fluid edged bed it is open okay there is no top distributor whereas in packed bed between two distributors it is tightly packed so that is why even though you use velocities much higher than terminal velocities of the particles still particles will not go still it is packed only because you are not allowing it to move at all it is tightly packed so that kind of situation will not uh, be there in fluid edged bed so the particles will uh, expand the bed will expand so naturally the fractions of gas and also solids will be different now just imagine for three phase you have two continuous phases gas is continuously going liquid is com continuously coming then you have the solid okay and again many varieties are there like uh, you heard of trickle beds catalytic reactors 
Where do they use? I mean, in a sense, we don't know. Uh -huh. The oil, hydrogen. Uh, desulfurization. Desulfurization of uh, you know oils. Sulfur is removed using zinc oxide catalyst or so. So there you have hydrogen and also oil as well as the solid catalyst. But you know trickle bed is a packed bed. But the other two phases are moving, gas and liquid. But again, your fraction of gas and fraction of solid uh, liquid depends on again what kind of flow rates you have. So that is why hydrodynamics are very very important, and many people in industry never bother about that. And this uh, because the establishment of volume fractions depend depend on the flow rates. At a particular flow rate, automatically the phases will have certain fractions that is established due to steady state conditions at that particular flow rates. If I change the flow rate, again gas volume may change, solid volume may change. Solid volume is constant generally when it is not uh, when it is catalyst uh, when it is not reacting in the uh, re reactor, but most of the time catalyst. But gas and liquid will change because even in a fluidized bed, you have the solid particles and you are not allowing them to go because even if they are going out like in FCC there is a lot of uh, solid particles which are going out I mean old FCC process not uh, recent one. Okay. So, then you collect them and again send back. Now, the recent one is fast fluid laser bed anyway they are going out let me allow to go out. They are going out and again collecting in a cyclone because of deactivation again regenerate and then we will send it back. Okay. So, but the world process only normal not fast fluidized bed, normal fluidized bed when they use that means the velocities are much lower, then they will put a cyclone and then try to collect not only of course FCC, in any other catalytic process you know catalyst should be as porous as possible. The moment you have as porous as possible what will happen to the mechanical strength of the particle decreases. So, when mechanical strength decreases because of attrition you will have a lot of yeah, fines going out. So, that you have to collect in the cyclone and if it is possible again you have to recycle back otherwise you have to take them away and then again make similar particles and then send it back. So, that is why any uh, these mass transfer steps in any reactor will be different depending on its own hydrodynamic conditions. That is why mass transfer even though we say that you know we have understood it is very difficult for a totally new reactor. Now, I do not know whether you heard of uh, platinum mesh type reactors mesh you, you have seen mesh no where they see you in your house also i think nowadays no housewife also is doing okay to separate uh, uh, that rice good rice and bad rice you know you may have very fine powder rice not very fine powder small small pieces okay and you will have normal rice so to separate them in houses villages they used to sieve okay that kind of sieves are used as packed bed one sieve above one sieve above one sieve it is in the production of hydro uh, production of nitric acid in one of the steps. There because the hydrodynamic conditions are different mass transfer coefficients like uh, you know Ranjan Marshall correlation will not be useful. You have to develop on your own another correlation. So, uh, and uh, you know uh, the of course, we drive cars and then we use cars, but we do not know there is a catalytic reaction even in car okay, in exhaust pipe and that is monolith entire catalyst is only one particle that particle is simply put into the exhaust uh, pipe okay and it is not solid again you know it is a porous porous one it is a wonderful design where you will have this is the cylinder like this then you have different plates arranged like this and gases go through this and still good engineers will try to put this one as like this what is the advantage some more surface area always chemical engineer job is always how to get more surface area whatever you do okay that's why i think you know by the time you come to extraction you are tied in mass transfer and maximum amount of time we spend only on distillation everyone knows that afterwards we do not know many operations. Okay. Next, next maximum is only absorption, but in uh, extraction if you go you know what kind of equipment they use mixture settlers of course again packed beds 
uh, sieve plates, in all that this hydrodynamics is very, very, very difficult in liquid liquid extraction. Why do you think so? I mean at least try to think. In liquid liquid extraction, it is not that easy to maintain flows through these columns. Why do you think so? Whereas, in absorption, where you have gas liquid system, it is easy to do that. It is not that difficult as liquid liquid. Just can you try to expand your brain? Why it can be? Huh? Solubility is fixed. Uh, I mean, actually, in liquid liquid extraction, one will not solve in the other. Okay? Only one of the components in one phase will only try to go to the other phase. These two are supposed to be immiscible. Okay? Yeah. Anything? I mean, we are now right now facing also. We have liquid solid system, but uh, still, uh, you know, it's like a moving bed type, where we want to use that one for. Uh, of course, it can be used as a biochemical reactor, or it can also be used as adsorber to remove color and all that, because it gives a beautiful uh, efficiency as far as adsorption is concerned. Because it is a steady state process. Normally, all adsorbers are unsteady state process because we put the adsorbent as batch. Here we are trying to make this one as continuous, and uh, when you have the continuous, solid is continuously coming, steady state, liquid is continuously going. So whatever the pollution control board tells us that okay, you should have 10 ppm in the outlet, we can design for that. Whereas in the other system where the solids are in batch condition, initially you will get zero because large amount of uh, adsorbent and the same concentration, right? So you will get zero, very pure water. Then after some time, slowly the concentration in the outlet goes on increasing and then finally it will reach your original area, original concentration in the inlet. So, these uh, pollution control board people will not allow you that. So, they will say that yes, always fixed only 10 ppm example. Okay? Yeah, you have not answered me. Why, you, why do you think that? Why? No, you have to expand, I say. You have to, even if it is wrong answer, tell me, no problem. Try to think. Diffusion. Who told that? Satyam. Ah, yeah. Diffusion of what? The gas into the. How the two phase are flowing, uh, flowing in the reactor, or in a uh, liquid liquid extractor? Of course, we have liquid liquid reactions also. There also again hydrodynamics come. What is the driving force? Reading. If I have two liquids. What is the driving force if I am not pumping them? How they flow? Density. Yeah, it is only the density difference. For liquid liquid systems, most of the time the density difference is not that much. So, that is why it is very difficult to make them flow the way you want. And the separation also takes place a lot of time because, particularly when you have very close densities. Whereas, if I have gas and solid, thousand difference. Solid will have normally you know uh, 1000 kg per meter cubed and gas will have only 1 kg per meter cubed. So, then separation is so fast that is why gas solid fluid aged beds are very easy to design. Whereas, liquid solid fluid aged beds are again not easy that is what the uh, right now we are facing uh, my research student he is not able to separate the solids from liquid when he is conducting the experiments on uh, hydrodynamics. Okay? So, that is why mass transfer and the hydrodynamics are very well related okay and uh, one has to remember that for every system you have a different correlation it's not universal the way i was telling you always ranjan marshall correlation ranjan marshall correlation is only for one particular particle and around that you have yeah gas going like that even in a packed bed you have a different correlation ranjan marshall correlation is not valid only place it may be valid slightly is a fluid aged bed. Why? Because in fluid aged bed particles are supposed to yeah, move around independently. So, the gas may be going around each and every particle. So, if no correlation is available for a actual fluid aged bed, then Ranjan Marshall correlation is generally used. That is single particle correlation, generally used. Okay? Good. So, now what we do is we take step 3, 4, 5 and combine them as reaction step. And this is where what you get is that Langmuir Hinshelwood kinetics. Okay? What we do is we take first these three steps and then we develop a rate expression. You will get minus R A equal to in terms of you know K A, K B, K C. You, you have uh, I think I also told in the beginning of the course 
what kind of rate expressions you get for catalytic reactions. Okay, minus R A equal to P A minus P B by K divided by you have adsorption, desorption constants. Okay, so that is the kind of equations what we are going to develop if you take uh, steps four, uh, steps three, four, five. And then once I have that rate expression, that means it is totally not affected by these two steps, these two steps. What is the meaning? Mass transfer is not control, controlling the rate. It is only the reaction. Okay. So then, once you have this uh, understanding of this three, four, five steps, then you can have how to combine this diffusion and maybe you know diffusion is maybe rate controlling most of the time, depending on the pore size of your catalyst. So that means the catalyst particle is uh, able to react because of large surface area that is available in the particle or exothermic reaction, the temperature may be high in the particle. So, rate of reaction may be fast, but you do not have mass transfer coming through the sufficient mass transfer through the pores, sufficient react, uh, reactant coming through the pores for the reaction. So, then how do we combine that reaction as well as diffusion? And we have a general thumb rule, whenever you have this kind of porous particle, the pores through the particle right? and when I have film which will be controlling generally diffusion through the pores are controlling. I mean these are the things which you have to remember, there is no choice. And if you have a good decent interview, these are the questions that will be asked. A lousy interview is asking how many mothers, how many fathers, how many sisters, how many brothers. So, this is ah, very good, very well answered, so take the job and then you end up in IT. Okay? That is the kind of jobs beautifully they give you. Right? Yeah, but here whenever you have this kind of decent uh, interviews in chemical engineering, this is the things only asked. I mean do you have any thumb roll like you know uh, uh, what step you can neglect and you know there are questions, I mean there are uh, interviews where what are the possible steps in any catalytic reaction. I myself asked many times, but I think uh, even PhD interviews also we used to ask. What is the difference between homogeneous reaction and heterogeneous reaction? Okay that they will say, oh that answer straight uh, forward comes. What is that? Oh, one phase or more than one phase, that is excellent. Then we will ask, okay, so what? I think if there is more than one phase, what will happen? What is, what is the extra information you require for the design? Stop. Okay. So, that is why uh, the, all these things are very important for us also to remember and I am not saying that you know these are very difficult. The, the, this is very, very simple things to remember. Provided you imagine the process, that is why always I say, always in my teaching, I try to ask you to imagine what is happening in the process. Automatically mathematics come easily the moment you imagine the process. Okay. Most of the time we start with mathematics and we forget about the actual process. Good. So, let us take this uh, steps uh, 3, 4, 5 and then uh, develop the equations. For that I think you have to take some continuity notes. Yeah, we call them as surface reaction models. Yeah, we call them as surface reaction models, which involve adsorption, reaction, and desorption. all three. Good. Here also we will try you know all seven, all seven may be rate controlling, <laughs> largest situation possible, but I think you know it is possible then we will derive one equation that will give you a wonderful idea. Okay. Please take this, physical mass transfer steps are not rate controlling when surface reaction models are developed. Okay. Or, or in other words, these steps are very fast compared to surface reaction. Okay. I think slightly I found a words we will use here. In the bracket you can write that is interface and intraphase transport processes are faster. These are slightly I found a words people who want to impress they say always interface, interface. 
okay because again you know our uh, subroutines have to work you know what is interface if the moment i said uh, uh, interface intra interface uh, nela god like this so that means you know trying to get all of us do that nothing wrong <laughs> okay so interface is what interface is what by the way yeah interface is this and this interface is yeah through the pores okay so those two okay good and isothermal condition is assumed good next one you write surface reaction rates can be expressed in two ways one langmuir hinshelwood formulation yeah one is langmuir hinshelwood formulation please write here in this just below that in this the rate is expressed in terms of in this the rate is expressed in terms of surface coverage theta surface coverage theta comma and then employing the langmuir isotherm to relate to relate theta to fluid concentrations second one is haugen watson approach haugen watson approach that is the second one just right below that haugen and watson derived rate equations in terms of surface concentrations of adsorbed species and free sites comma and then expressed these concentrations in terms of langmuir isotherm i think in your uh, physical chemistry book that theta approach you could have seen when you are deriving langmuir isotherm uh, langmuir isotherm okay but uh, you have seen uh, haugen watson book you have used i think iit metals you would have never used i think you don't even know no and yeah there are three volumes volume 1 volume 2 volume 3 volume 1 is material balance okay energy material balance volume 2 is thermodynamics 3 is kinetics there is no heat transfer you are talking about colson richardson only these three in volume 3 you have lots of catalytic reaction formulations kinetics and catalysis i think that is the title of volume 3 if you remember correctly okay volume 2 is thermodynamics and volume 1 is material and energy balances and those are almost the first books in chemical engineering and uh, what a wonderful books you know all the books because directly the data from industry were used at that time most of the i think shankar was asking me he wanted to give some reactor problems for uh, i think that optimization course or so so he wanted to have good uh, kinetic data then i told him just go and see catalysis that book by haugen and watson yeah wonderful data given actual experiment i mean uh, the uh, industrial data afterwards anyway we went very far from industry and industry also ran away from us and now again we are trying to come together because now industry i don't know whether you have observed industry has now intellectual people not the i'm i'm talking about percentage one. because of the competition they have taken the best people that are possible international competition no so that's why their processes must be totally new and uh, updated and always they have to be one step ahead when compared to their competitors so that is why even though 100% basic theory they have not understood but wonderful uh, information from chemical engineering has been used to develop these processes okay and also their techniques are uh, academic institutions nowhere can come because of course they have a lot of money so they can use those techniques i am techniques means i am talking about uh, analytical uh, uh, instruments for the analysis and all that because i told you know small 500 ml uh, medicine also may be costing 1 lakh 2 lakh rupees so that's why they have to be very very that's why industry has now excellent talent now they want to come and then of course now the again in always life is cyclized i think you know in the beginning they were together in between separated that's also most of the time uh, happens you know first love you come very close together get married fight every day then go away then children will come again come together for the sake of children 
everywhere any process you take the cyclic things may happen okay so that's why industry nowadays you know we have how much money that is coming to iit from either industry or uh, other uh, i mean research laboratories private laboratories or government laboratories tremendous amount okay anyway so that's why i think this history also sometimes i think you require you know haugen watson or the people and what is the third name it's not only two that's why when i was hod i used to push you know these btech boys to have quizzes chemical engineering quiz and some of us used to give all those questions now they will also run away the moment you say chemical engineering you tell mba quiz they will run yeah run towards that not chemical engineering yeah what is the third name no one remembers okay i think very nice no i think we don't remember even our basic books no no idea at all huh trying to recall uh, all uh, files are searching in the mind ragaj r a g a t z yeah no you remember or no one remember yeah these three people you know because of this and, and another three people also wrote wonderful book who are the three macabend smith is only two i say harriet 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 is i think recently yesterday he was born the original one <laughs> harriet i think you know smith, smith and van is only two again oh, three ha ah oh. bsa bird foot light foot of course there are four others in another master transfer book i don't know whether you remember that or not those are three these are three faust faust there is a book you know that is what you know we are even going away because of the computers we are going away from the textbooks also because all your information is only google no if you want to master transfer correlation you first google only right or e transfer correlation only google uh, i think the beauty is going but anyway again it will come back huh? definitely please remember yeah everything will come back to the books again yeah good okay so yeah i th- take this one even though there is not much difference next para you can write even though there is not much difference between these models haugen and watson models are easy to handle in which surface deactivation can be incorporated surface deactivation can be incorporated full stop to do justice to both the schools that means haugen watson school and uh, langmuir hinshelwood school to do justice to both the schools let us refer them as langmuir hinshelwood langmuir hinshelwood haugen watson all are combined haugen watson formulations we call lh hw equations lh hw kinetics lh hw uh, models all these things lh hw means langmuir hinshelwood haugen watson models okay this is what one of the questions i gave also in that zero test where what information you get from lh hw models what information you get you get a kinetic expression for catalytic reactions okay good let us first derive langmuir isotherm what are the assumptions of langmuir isotherm very good monolayer coverage okay uniform surface conditions that means i think all surface behaves in the exactly same way isothermal conditions these are all assumptions okay shivakumar last ta yeah monolayer coverage uniform surface activity isothermal conditions these are the assumptions in langmuir isotherm yeah next one you can write the surface may be divided into theta and 1 minus theta where theta is fraction of surface yeah covered by theta is fraction of surface covered by adsorbed molecules and 1 minus theta is bare surface 1 minus theta is bare surface that means the surface is free of any adsorption so rate of adsorption rate of adsorption we call minus r a equal to k into p the partial pressure of certain gas into 1 minus theta okay 
rate of desorption equal to minus R D equal to a uh, minus also minus you do not have to put. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell this one? Yeah, some Okay. See, theta is the surface that is covered with the molecules. Now, rate of desorption depends on how many molecules you have on the surface. Okay. More coverage means more desorption. And the other one is the rate of adsorption depends on what is the free surface because it is only mono layer, no? Only one molecule can sit there, okay, at one particular site. So, that is why this is proportional to the surface area that is available that is 1 minus theta and that is also proportional to the concentration of that is in I think P A by R T is concentration partial pressure. Okay. The pressure on the surface of a particular gas. Okay. So, at uh, steady state, so R A R A equal to R D to just equate those two and then uh, okay because this is easy. So, I thought I will cover this and then leave you. So, do you remember the equation? Theta equal to capital K P by 1 plus K P, where capital K equal to what? Yeah, K by K dash. Okay. Of course, sometimes this is also imagined as small v by v, where small v equal to volume of gas adsorbed divided by V m equal to volume of gas adsorbed with a monolayer coverage with a mono layer coverage of surface. Yeah, there is always diffraction. Good. Anyway, I think we will stop here. This is what is Langmuir isotherm and uh, even if you derive an equation for uh, Haugen Watson in terms of surface concentrations, you will get a similar equation as theta equal to only one equation, right? K C into C G is the gas concentration and 1 plus K C C G. This is Langmuir Hinshelwood and this is Haugen Watson. It is same thing, but th that is expressed in terms of partial pressures and this KC is written because it is in terms of concentrations. Okay. Format everything is same. Good. So, these two the first equations and then we will actually derive the equations rate expressions for surface reaction where we have step 3, step 4, step 5 will come into picture. Okay, thank you.